I'm the, I'm the first president that the, that the school has had, yes. So, and it's very interesting because the diocese is looking at this as a model. Other dioceses around the country use this model as well, and it's catching on. And it makes a lot of sense because in my role as president, I really focus on the external operations. So we you know, try to look at admissions, uh, marketing, fundraising, development, you know, those things, branding. And that then frees up the time for the principals to run the day-to-day -day operations of the school. Prior job, prior to coming here, I was in an Episcopal school in Louisiana where we had three campuses. We had 800 students. Um, so it actually was a lot larger operation than Saints Peter and Paul. Um, the difference for me has been, and the, the biggest adjustment I've had to make is the governance structure. So, you know, Episcopal schools really operate as independent schools, even if, you know, even if they are a parish school, which we were. Um, but here the pastor is heavily involved. Um, we have a brand new advisory board and they're just getting off the ground. A uh, fantastic group of individuals. And there's also the diocese. So you have three different layers of governance and it's, it's really just trying to, for me, trying to wade through all of that to find my place. And we're actually, we're working on a new school mission right now um, because for many years um, we were thought of, I think, as two separate entities, meaning high school and elementary school. And so really my charge after speaking with Father Nash since I arrived in July is really trying to bring it all into the idea of one. We're one school. And then that you'll carry that idea a little bit further with parish and school being one. You know, so this is going to be an evolved process, you know, and, uh, uh, but, but we're on our way. I, I, throughout my career as, as head, I've really taken on projects where um, schools were pretty good but had room for growth. And, and there were challenges such as enrollment, um, you know, curriculum perhaps. Um, and, and coming into the St. Peter and Paul, enrollment is a very big challenge for us. Um, Catholic schools across the country, you know, you're seeing enrollment decrease and you're seeing consolidation and, and, uh, and that kind of thing and that's, and that's bothersome. So we have to look at that for the future and say it's important for Catholic schools to survive and thrive and how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to have to be more inclusive. So we are going to have, you know, Catholic mission is going to be at the forefront of all that we do and that will never change. But we also have to show that we're welcoming to all faiths um, for us to really, to really reach our full potential. Well, yeah. First of all, we can, we can do something that other places can. If religion's very important to you, that's, that's a big piece. Um, you can't get that at the public school, you know, and you're not going to get at that at other non-sectarian day schools. Uh, beyond that, um, some of the things that we're exploring are all the things that are going on in education today that we're not doing, but we'd like to do. So, for instance, um, STEAM. So science, technology, engineering, art, mathematics, you know, um, the maker movement that's going on in education, um, entrepreneurship. We're trying to prepare students uh, for college and then on to jobs. We don't know what those jobs are going to be. But we do know the skill set they're going to need. They're going to have to be creative. They're going to have to be nimble. They're going to have to be able to, if things don't work out, they're going to have to have a skill set enough to, to maybe transition to another type job. So really all these entrepreneurial type things. And if we could get that started here, I've seen other schools do it, uh, bits and pieces of it, but it's becoming more and more, uh, not even fashionable, but, but almost required. But for me, I think the, the biggest differential, you know, we, we, our graduating class last year, the class of 2015, they earned seven and a half million dollars in scholarship for a class of just about 50. So we're doing something right and our colleges are attracted to our students. So, and um, I think when our students go, they're well prepared, you know, they stay, they graduate, they move on. And I get to see now with, with my role with alumni, you know, we're trying to locate alumni and, and keep adding to our database and, you know, they're all over the country. Change has to come in pieces, you know, you can't, you know, in my mind I'd say, oh boy, I have all these great ideas and I'd love to flip the switch and, and there we go and we're off and running. But, but you have to do it slowly and you have to have the plan and you have to follow the plan and everything takes time and everything takes money. You know, so um, what can we do that's cost effective um, that can really, but really enhance our program at the same time? So lot, lots of things keep me up at night, uh, uh, but, uh, but, but it's also exciting. I, I don't, it's not necessarily I'm staying up at night because I'm worrying about things, but if I do stay up at night is 
gosh, this is a great idea. How can we do that? 